DaVinci Resolve 19.1 was released a few days ago, which means I have had a few days to play with it. I've got some testing notes, but I want to show you two of my favorite new features today in this video, one of which has some caveats that I haven't seen talked about anywhere else. Welcome back to Creative Reality, my friend. Today, we're going to dive into the Fusion page of Resolve again, and the edit page as well, but we're going to have a little fun with this. I'm going to show you some behind the scenes of what's going on behind some of these new updates. So let's take a look at DaVinci Resolve and see what we're working with. Here we have a timeline for a video that I'm working on, and I have one clip where I really want to highlight myself. And Honestly, this is something that I really wish I had figured out a while ago or watched another tutorial on, but now it's built into Resolve, so we don't have to do any kind of dirty work. We just drag and drop, right? Not so fast. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So the first thing we need to do is set up our clip for this, and we want to jog through. We can, we can kind of scroll through here. I hold up the camera, and then I point at it, and when I get to the exact frame right there, that's the frame I want. So I'm gonna use Alt mouse wheel to zoom in. And you can see I've got some prior examples over there. Shh, pay no attention to the man behind the mask. Anyway, we're gonna press Control B to break there. That's what we need to do. And we're gonna hold Alt, click on our video clip and drag up. And this will work for any of your clips at home, hopefully. Um, it might take some tinkering. Hopefully the rest of this video makes a little bit more sense, but I am gonna use this example as kind of a decent case scenario. Usually I go after the worst case, but not today. So now we have a duplicate. We're gonna hold shift, press right twice because I want two seconds forward and we're gonna drag our clip back and then we're gonna take our original and bring it all the way out to the end. If it's not lining up, if it's like this, make sure snapping is enabled here. Mine is obviously. So then we're gonna drag this down and put it in line and we're gonna to come to the start of it, this is important, we're gonna right click and we're gonna change clip speed and we're just gonna click on freeze frame and click change and now this is freeze frame. Do you see it's not moving? If I enlarge the viewer, there's no movement in here. This is good, this is what we want for the first example. There will be another example. Trust me, I've got, a, we have to do the basics, then we're gonna build on that, right? Anyway, we have our clip, this is great. Now. What I wanna do is put an outline around myself, kind of a sticker effect, if you will. And for that, we're gonna need Magic Mask. Now, here's the kicker, right? If I come to Effects, it's over here, and I go into Effects, I can click the uh, magnifying glass and type in Outer Stroke. That's the new effect. I can drag it on here, and nothing's gonna happen. So I'm gonna Control Z to undo that. If we go into Color, and I have done a Magic Mask tutorial already, so I'm not gonna go through all the details right now, but if I do a real quick and dirty one, you can see we get this, right? Okay, it should be transparent behind me, right? Except when I add the outer stroke, nothing happens. So if I bring this up and I duplicate it, disable that one, come in here, reset all the grades and nodes. Now, when I re-enable it, nothing's different. You don't see, and if what I just did confused you, don't worry, you can watch it back again or go look at the other Resolve tutorials on this channel. They should be able to help you out with that. If they don't, leave a comment below and I'll help you out. But basically, I just wanted to show that the outer stroke doesn't do anything in this regard. What's happening is it's a fusion effect. So fusion happens before color. So the outer stroke is happening before the magic mask. So that's not gonna work. We have to do a magic mask in the Fusion page. So let's select and backspace to get rid of our duplicate, and we can go back into color, right click, reset all grades and nodes, which returns us back to square one. And it still has the Fusion, you can see it's doing the render cache, because our effect is still here. So we're gonna delete our effect, and now we just have our freeze framed uh, clip here. We're gonna start by clicking on our freeze frame clip, hold Alt, drag up to create a duplicate, and then the duplicate, we're gonna right click and say open infusion page. And real quick, I'm gonna add the magic mask. And I've done this clip several times before. So I already know pretty much what I'm doing. Control mouse wheel to zoom in. And I'm gonna select this stuff in my hat. It's not a very good clip for this because it is low contrast. But when I re-enable it, you can see it selected a bunch here. So we use our minus and get rid of all that. We can get rid of that over there. Click better. Yeah, that's decent. That's what we need. Now we'll track it. 
So now that we're back in the edit tab, we've got our fusion composition. You can see that DaVinci Resolve has done the render cache for it. We'll drag our outer stroke onto our clip and then boom, there we go. We have the effect, it's done, right? Well, almost. If I click on our clip and I click at effects, it gives us some options. So we have a border, we can change the width. I want that a little bit bigger. You can change the shadow. I don't like it as strong. We'll bring it back just a little bit. And you can see that we have this effect. And now when I re-enable the background, voila, now I'm a sticker on top of there. So if I play this through, it plays, it pauses, and then it replays again. Pretty cool, right? That's a neat effect. Now, to do this with, uh, a, you know, like a logo or whatever, it's very easy. Let's do that real quick. So now I've added the DaVinci Resolve logo, and if I drag outer stroke to it, voila, it's done. We can make it bigger. It knows the transparency of a PNG. This is all well and good. But see, this is what doesn't work with something you're modifying in Fusion because you need that Fusion stuff done all in one, st in one stop, and then you're throwing the outer stroke on top of it. So it looks great with the logo like you see here, but not so great with uh, things you're manipulating. Anyway, let's go in and take a look at what's actually happening behind the scenes. So if I click on my clip and then I come up into the inspector, if you don't see it, it's right there under effects. You'll notice it says fusion here, which is how we know the outer stroke is a fusion effect. If you click the fusion icon, it'll open it up in the fusion page and you can see that we have a group here. See the three red lines, it's a group. You double click on it, it opens up. We can adjust our viewer a little bit to make more room. And you can see that basically it's our media in one, which is our footage, comes in through a pipe router and then goes to background one and merge one. So what it's doing is by going to merge one, it's keeping the version of me here with color and detail and all that. But by going into background as a mask, that's what the blue line indicates. It's turning this background, which is white into just the outline of me. So if I remove, if I disable this, you'll see it's just the white, right? Control Z to undo, but it's overwriting that with, or underwriting rather, with the uh, background here, and then just in a road dilate and a shadow. Pretty simple stuff. I Like I said earlier, I wish I had done this before and figured this out, but I didn't. Now it's a drag and drop effect. Thank you, Blackmagic Design. Now, how do we modify that further. So in an earlier video, I wanted a glowing line around me, right? I don't know why I used air quotes. Let's go do that. We can do that real quick here. All we have to do is go into Fusion for Outer Stroke, right where we were, and then we're going to expand this box here. And in between the Erode Dilate and the Shadow, I want another tool. So I'm gonna press Shift Space Bar, and I'm gonna type in Glow, and it's gonna give me a Glow node. And then under glow, we can go to color scale and I want it a little bit blue and a little bit green to give it kind of a light blue color. And when I expand the viewer, you can see it's got a blue tinge to it. If we go back to the edit page, now it's got a blue tinge to it. Pretty cool, right? Like that's pretty neat. So just to show that this works in video, I have another clip that I have pre-created where we have the video playing. So we're gonna do that right here. And you can see that it works pretty good. So let's talk about the second effect that I wanted to show you that I think is really cool. And you already saw it in the intro to this video. It is the stage curtains. There they are. So let's go play with that. We're gonna to go to generators and get our magnifying glass and type in curt for curtains. And then stage curtains, you, you can uh, scroll left and right with your mouse, hover it, and it shows you what the effect is gonna look like. We're just gonna drag it on and we're gonna drag it to fit. So just like this. And this one will um, change how it works based on how long it is. So it'll change the speed at which everything opens. We want it a little bit shorter and you don't have to fade it out or anything. I've literally just dragged and dropped this here. And when I play the clip, it's gonna pop in. It, how cool is that? Now that's all well and good, but what if you want the stage curtains to reveal just the background? Again, we can use the magic mask. Let's take a look. 
So here I have another clip where I've done Magic Mask, and if I shrink the viewer a little bit, you can see I have our actual background. I kept this one as a backup, then our stage curtains, and then a Magic Mask. So if I disable all this, you see, and make this bigger, duh, it's a little bit uh, backgroundy, right? It's missing the background. So I'll re-enable all that, and voila, you see me over or in front of the stage curtains, and then Bob's your uncle. Play it back, ta-da! The scene reveals itself. So those are my two favorite features of DaVinci Resolve 19.1. I mentioned earlier I had some testing notes. One of which is multicam doesn't work the same way as it used to. It used to be if you right clicked on the audio or video track and then changed the camera angle, it would change it just for the video or audio that you had clicked on. Now it changes it for both of the video and audio linked clips that uh, make up your multicam, which I'm not a huge fan of, but you can press Alt and click on the video or Alt and click on the audio to just select the audio or video and then change your camera angle. The other thing is big. 19 had quite a bit of crashing. Going between timelines in DaVinci Resolve 19, I had a heck of a time where it would just crash and I did not like that. But 19.1 so far has fixed that. So I'm gonna say thank you very much for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, let me know in the comments below and boop the like button. Uh, it's been a long day. Anyway, go watch this video next. I hope you're having a great day and John out.